will be known. Alas, sir, where is your daughter? Why do you ask? Oh, sir, when did you see her? How he looks. Uh, this morning. Was she well? Was she in health? Sir, when did she sleep? These are strange questions. I do not think that she was well, for now that you may, may be minded. For I asked her questions this very morning. She answered me so far from sh what she was, so childishly, so sillily, as if she were a fool, <laughs> innocent. And I was very angry. But what of her, sir? Nothing but my pity, but it must be known that it is as good by me as by another that will love her. Well, sir? Not right? No, friend, not well. But well? Tis too true. She is mad. It cannot mm. be. Believe you'll find it so. I have suspected what you have told me. The gods comfort her. Either this was her love for Palamon, or fear of my miscarrying on escape, or both. Tis likely. But why all this haste? I'll tell you quickly. As I was angling in the great lake that lies behind the palace, as patiently as I was attending sport, I heard a voice, a shrill one, and attentive, I gave my ear. I laid me down and listened to the words she sung. For then, through a small glade cut by the fisherman, I saw it was your daughter. Pray, go on, sir. She sung much, but no sense. Only I heard her repeat this often. Palamon is gone. It's gone to the woods to get the mulberries. I'll find him out tomorrow. <laughs> His shackles will be trained, and he'll be taken. What shall I do then? Then she talked to you, sir. I pay you as soon as you're at tomorrow morning. She must gather flowers to bury you. And see the house right next to him. Then she sung nothing but Willow, Willow, Willow. And everybody was Palamon for Palamon. And Palamon was a tall young man. The place was needed where she sat. Her careless tresses, a wreath of bulrush round him. About her sex, thousands of freshwater flowers of several colors. And she appeared to me thought like the fair nymph that feeds the lake of water. Or iris, newly dropped down from the heaven. Rings of, may, uh, rings of rushes she made that grew by, and to him spoke the prettiest posies. Thus our true love sighed, that you may lose many a one in me. And then she wept, and with the same breath sighed and kissed her hand. Alas, what a pity it is. I made it to her. She saw me, she off the flood. I saved her. And set her safe to land, when presently she slipped away to the city maid with such a crying swiftness that, believe me, she left me far behind. Three or four I saw cross off her. One of them I knew to be your brother. For she stayed and fell scarce to be out of way, and left them with her, and came hither to tell you. Here she is. <laughs> <laughs> good even, good men. So pray, did you ever hear of one young Palamon? Yes, we know of him, wench. He's not a fine young gentleman. Tis, love. By no mean crosser. She is then distempered, far worse than she now shows. Yes, he's a fine man. Oh, is he so? You have a sister. Yes. But she shall never have him tell her so for a trick that I know. You best look to her, for if she see him once, she's gone. She's done and undone in an hour. All the young maids of our town are in love with him, but I laugh at him and let him all alone. Is it not a wise course? This is strange. They come from all parts of the kingdom to him. I'll warrant you he had not so few last night as twenty to dispatch. He'll pick us up in two hours if his hand be in. She's lost. Pass all cure. Come hither. You are a wise man. Does she know him? No. But she <laughs> did. You are master of a ship? Yes. Where's your compass? Here. Set it to the north. And now direct your course to the wood where Palamon lies longing for me. <laughs> for the tackling, let me alone. Come, weigh my hearts cheerly all. Uff, 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 tis up, the wind's fair. Top the bowline out with the mainsail. Where's your whistle, master? Tack about. <laughs> when sings the away her fall. <laughs> <laughs> Alone and only beautiful. 
by there. Our sight. Thou art a changeling to him, a mere gypsy. And this, the noble body, him sought it utterly lost. What a mere child that's fancy given two fair gods of equal sweetness. Not distinguish, but let's cry for both. How now? From the noble duke, your brother, madam, I bring you news. To come. To the quarrel? Yes. But I might tend first. <clears throat> Bring them in. Quickly, by any means, I long to see them. Good you contending lovers are here. Now, my fair sister, you must love one of them. I had rather both, so neither for my sake should fall untimely. Now, as I have a soul, I long to see them! <laughs> Lady, you shall see men fight now. And it is, it is a pity love should be so tyrannous. <laughs> My soft-hearted sister, what think ye? Weep not till they weep tears, which it must be. You have steeled them with your beauty. Honored friend to you, I get healed. Pray order it. Bring the people that must use it. Yes, sir. Come, I will go. I cannot stay. Their fame has fired me. Till then, good friend, be royal. There shall want no bread. Thank you.